So without further ado, uh, uh, Yuan, thank you very much for, for joining us. Uh, he is going to be uh, talking to us pretty much about anything, about what is teaching, his work, his poetry, and as I mentioned, his book here, uh, and we will be looking at one of his poems. But, you know, as, as you go in more, more with these global thoughts, I, I'm, I'm more open to the idea of just making this like an extended conversation. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a big presentation with a question and answer session at, at the end. Okay, so this is how we're, uh, so this is how we'll, we'll do it. We want you to feel comfortable to ask a question any, any time. Okay, but before that, we have a couple of things, a uh, couple items to, whoops, to, to get going. Our next speaker uh, in Global Thoughts is gonna be Kevin Locke. I'm very excited to have him here. He is a, a Lakota Indian in Anishinaabe. He's also on our board of advisors. So he is helping Abroadia work to try and recruit more Native American Indians uh, to study abroad. But now with this pandemic, we're trying to find my, more opportunities for COIL programs or online course programs to include Native American Indians. So he, uh, he recently wrote a very good article uh, about the concept of the Native American Indian flute. And there's two viewpoints on, the, on this. And one is the true Native American flute. The other one is an invention by US marketers to try and capitalize on, on, the, the, uh, on the history, the nostalgia of the Native American Indians that really has nothing to do with the Native American Indian tradition. So that's one of the things he will be talking about uh, on October 12th. So if you could join us for that, that would be fantastic. Okay. Uh, and now, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, uh, our speaker is, is, as I mentioned, a Cuban poet. He's going to talk to us about his book, his work, maybe about Cuba, any, anything like that. Okay. And I think uh, we're ready to go. So, Yuan, again, thank you very much for joining us. Um, thank you very much, uh, Tom, uh, especially for, for inviting me to your program. Um, um, to this meeting. I'm so glad to be here, really. Um, first, I just want to say I'm so sorry because my English is so bad. So <laughs> I'm ashamed uh, to answer in English. That's, so. that, that, that's okay. I'll, I'll tell you one thing. You know, your English is not that bad because you did not see the presidential debate yesterday. <laughs> An individual there, his English was very bad. So <laughs> I'm sorry, we shouldn't get politics on here, but no, don't worry about your English. Like I said, this is just basic, uh, just a conversation um, you know, about your book, about Cuba, about anything else. And of course, okay. Kathleen, Sierra, Jen, if you have any questions, you know, shoot. You know, like I said, this is a, it's gonna be a conversation and uh, we, we hope, uh, let's see. So with, with that being said, um, I'm gonna start this first question. Uh, uh, Yuan, in terms of... Um, oh, thanks a lot, Jane. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that, that's true. You do speak very good. Uh, so how did you get interested in poetry, Yuan? Um, I, I started uh, writing poetry uh, when I was a teenager in Cuba, of course. Um, yeah, uh, when I was uh, um, 18, 17 years old, long time ago. <laughs> yes. um, yeah, um, and I started writing um, poetry because um, in that time I was, um, I was living um, uh, hard times. I mean, uh, I was confused. Uh, I was crazy in that time. Uh, I didn't know what to do. Uh, I had many, uh, in that time, um, I had many uh, personal, uh, personal travels. So poetry uh, was the, in that time, was the solution. No? I don't know, the inspiration. Uh, to go on uh, in my life. So in that time, uh, I started to, uh, I started writing and that's the, the first step of the history. So I'm here right now uh, and I'm still writing poetry. Good. 
and that's okay. That's the the, the beginning. I mean, the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that, that, that's very good. I think, you know, poetry, they say, is, is um, it's very liberating. It, it, it frees you and you know, it allows you to express people, uh, express things. You know, I, I'm no writer, but when I was unemployed for a long time, you know, like 12 months, 13 months, I, um, I wrote. You know, I didn't, it, it, silly stuff, but just writing is really, really, I guess it frees up your mind or your consciousness. I don't know, but it really helped me a lot. It's so a I, need. It is. Uh, yes. Need. Yeah, it's 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 really uh, really really important. Um, so let let's go to, to your book here, in algún lugar. So what? How did you arrive to this title? How did you come up with this title? Uh, the book uh, was written uh, around uh, two two thousand eighteen. Uh huh. Uh, in 2018, uh, the poems in that book just just came to me in that time. Um, just by chance, I was in, in several countries in that time. <laughs> I was in Barcelona, I was in, uh, in Mexico, um, and I was in, 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 in Cuba. In, in Havana. So um, uh, I began to write that poetry in, in all those uh, cities. Uh, and then I realized uh, that, um, that uh, there was a, a connection between the cities. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I thought that the um, the cities were not too different between them. So, um, so the book uh, is about uh, uh, love, loneliness, uh, sickness, uh, companies, mm -hmm. friendships, relationships around the world. Um, uh, it doesn't matter the, the, the difference between countries but the, the, um, the feelings. So um, I came to, to, to this idea uh, um, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's, it's very hard to, to speak in. No, uh, sorry. <laughs> I came to this idea um, traveling uh, and I'm, I'm feeling all, all um, several experiences in, in all these countries uh, and that's it the book uh, came in um, and I have and I had the, 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 the log uh, when I when I sent uh, the book um, to a competition in, in Barcelona uh, a, a literature competition, um, and I had a, a mention. So the book, fortunately, uh, the book was published by a publishing house in Barcelona. So that's the the whole the whole history, the whole history ab about it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's, it's I think it's good. I mean, obviously that. That title describes it very well because you start, I think, here in in Atlanta. I, I noticed, uh, and then you 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 go on, yeah, in algún lugar de Atlanta, and then and then you go on. I think it's um, it's it's just a remarkable journey. And I and and I did get one of your poems, one of my favorites here. So we'll, uh, oops, I went backwards. So let me um, uh, get to the poem here. Here we go. You probably recognize this one. I'll, I'll let you read it and let everyone read it. Um, but it is oh. one of the ones that, that struck me. I, I really like. Oops, I made a spelling error. Sorry about that. I just caught that. <laughs> oh. So I, I, I'm going to read it? Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, why don't you read in Spanish? Okay. Yeah. 
Eh, ella le cuenta haber soñado su sonido en una calle de La Habana Vieja, el sonido que ahora mismo tiembla ante el hallazgo de su propia vibración. She tells him of having dreamed of his sound on a street in Hall, Havana, the sound that now trembles and the finding of her own vibration. I, I, I think it's, I think it's wonderful. For me, um, it resonated with me because uh, I've been to Old Havana. I, I don't know, Kathleen, Sierra, Jen, uh, Emily, have you been to Havana at all? No. Well, oh. hopefully you will soon. Um, you can miss it. Tom, yeah. you're, you met my colleague there when I worked at my previous institution. I put her in touch with you. But unfortunately, my uh, previous boss at that time, she didn't allow me to go. I was, oh. I was gutted. Oh, that's too bad. Who, who, was you, who was your colleague, Jen? Mary Kirchner at Methodist University in North Carolina. Yes, yes. Okay, I remember, I remember Mary. Boy, it's been a while. But uh, Yes, that was probably <laughs> five or six years ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I think... A big part of Havana is old Havana, obviously. You, when, once you, you all visit Havana, you, you have to go there. And I think you'll see this because I like this, what you want to work, you, where the, you know, the sound that now trembles at the finding of her own vibration because it really does have a vibration, it's, it's electric. You know, you can't really, you can't help but feel a part of this. You know, you know we we're just talking about another Cuban, her name is G.C. Gonzalez, who is in, at the University, Concordia University in Canada right now. She's earning her PhD on Irish Cuban studies. And if you go to Old Havana, you're going to see a lot of words, a lot of street names, O'Reilly for one, um, O'Reilly Cafe. The, the connection between Ireland and Cuba is, is, is incredible. Uh, and I would say that the, there's that energy, it's almost palpable. And if you do go, you're going to see the theater, the, the, the street dancers walking on these stilts. Uh, there, there's a magic there. So I think for me, just personally, that, that's why this was my favorite poem. Uh, there's uh, several others in the book, and I do encourage you to read it so you can take a look and see see what you think. But I really like the 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 the, the division um, of, of how he captured that. But anyway, you want enough of me? I mean, I, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about this poem? Or what were you thinking? What were you feeling? Uh, um, first of all, first um, um, uh, you did a, a good translation, oh, actually. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, congratulations. Uh, Thank you. I, I like it very much, actually. Um, uh, first, um, my style of, 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 of poetry is not, uh, is not uh, too lyric. Yeah, too lyrical, yeah. Good. Too lyrical? My, I, I, I used to, I use, uh, um, Conversational, uh, conversational poetry, colloquial poetry. That that's what I do in poetry, um, and I like to to uh, to write poetry about daily life. So, in a colloquial language, you know, mm -hmm. daily life in in colloquial language. That's what I do in in, in all my books. I'm not too, I don't like, uh, you know, the, the um, I don't know how to say adornos. Uh, that's, um, no, that's the word. I, I forgot what the word is in, in, English, in English as well. Uh, adornos are just like um, Floritura? Decor decorations. Floritura. That, yeah, something huh? to cover, yeah. De decorations, okay. I'd, I'd say decorations. decorations. Yeah. I don't like to use decorations. Um, I prefer uh, colloquial language. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I remember um, uh, that point uh, was uh, in the chapter about Havana, in some place of, of Havana. Yeah, it's about city and about uh, feelings, feelings that I, that, that I felt in that time of my life, uh, personal feelings, and, and feelings about city too, about... Uh, about Havana, mm. um, um, uh, the love uh, of, of um, oh my gosh, uh, <laughs> um, I mean, it's not about, it, it's not about only me, mm -hmm. but, but the city, the, the, the love 
uh, inside the city. Um, so, so I can connect the, the person with a, with a universal thing, with a city. Persons, individuals, mm -hmm. and, and cities. So for me, at least for me, uh, there was a, a good relationship between the, the, the particular and the, and the general, uh, the general thing. So that's an interesting relationship. And I, and I, and I, I tried to, to explore that in poetry, in, in this poem and other, and other writings, you know? <laughs> no, the, it, like, I said, there, there, like I said, there are several poems that I liked that, that you wrote here. The one that we have here is, is, is my favorite. Um, yeah, I, well, I'll think about reading something, but maybe I won't. But uh, well, I, I like this one here actually. It's uh, es positivo el canto de los grillos. Los cantos de los grillos anuncian el buen tiempo. So roughly translating in English, it's just the it's positive or it's optimistic. You know, the the sound of, of grasshoppers or I mean of crickets. Uh, the, the sound of the of the crickets announce the good weather. So it's or or, or, or a good time. Uh, Actually, I, I I heard that sentence in Mexico. Oh really? I, so an old a, man, an old man, an old man told me about that. Interesting. We were we were talking about about life, etc. Mm -hmm. And then he told me, "Do you know that that the the weather is 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 related to uh, grillos?" Yeah, the grillos. Yeah, the crickets. Grillos? Yeah. Uh, uh, did you know? And I, and and I and I thought, oh my gosh. Uh, th this is so interesting. I, I, I need I need to to uh, to to put in in the in the in the writing. You know? So so I wrote the 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 poem, um, thinking about that that uh, sentence from the old man in Mexico. It's a it's a national sentence or very common sentence in Mexico actually. So that's why I wrote that poem. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I like that because in Spanish, there's another one that's called uh, En un canto de, de gallo, uh, you know, <laughs> which I like. And that's like in, in, in uh, oh, how do you say it? Uh, in a cockle doodle doo of a, of, of, of a. I don't know the, I don't, I don't know. Of a I don't know how to say it in English. But, but I, I, I love these expressions. I, I see what you're saying. And, it, and it's really, um, I, I like that a lot. It's um, rooster. Thank you. It's a, uh, <laughs> It, it's 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 like I'll be back in a jiffy. I'll be back very quickly. But see, that's what I love about Spanish, and that's what I always want my Spanish students to get when they go to to Cuba or to Mexico, uh, or to Bolivia, with all these expressions. It's it's absolutely it's absolutely wonder uh, wonderful. Um, you know, it's a it's just a neat way of expressing something like that. I'll, I'll be back. And un canto de un gallo, I'm back. That sounds better. Hey, I'll be back in a few minutes. It's just a, a little more, uh, a little more, oomph, a little more. Uh, uh, a little more uh, flavor to it. And I think probably in, in you, Sierra, you probably uh, hear this in, in Ireland. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure they have some sayings that are typical of that country, right? Not only do they have sayings that are <laughs> typical of the country, but Irish people just like saying words in general. <laughs> there you if go. you say, ask how the weather is, they'll say, oh, well, it's raining and I had to bring the cows in and then the dogs were also barking, but yeah, it's rain. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, it's all the countries have it. Yeah, all the countries. So, in general, they have it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's you know I think I, I remember reading somewhere that they said that a poet is like the the conscience of a country, really. So it's really interesting that you see all these expressions, poetic expressions, because they really reverberate, uh, or they reflect a certain part of you know. Of, of, of the country, I think it's 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 fantastic. I always um, we try yeah, in in Cuba because there's so many of these expressions. It's unbelievable. I can't even say them right now. A lot of them are have to do with baseball, which are really funny. But it's a great way for our students, any student, to really get to know the people is learning these expressions. So if I have a student who comes to Cuba, I say, oh, Tom, I don't know any Spanish. I say, Well, that's too bad. You're still going to learn these expressions if nothing else. So. Uh, yeah, because once they, they learn these expressions, they start using them. 
And then once the other person understands what they're trying to say, I think it's, it's, a, it's a great idea. But, uh, but I mean, going back, to, I, I, this, this book, is, is it, it, it's good. I like it because, and I think a lot of us in international education have moved around a lot. So the title for me, it, it speaks to me. You know, it, it, we do move around a lot and in and, and different places, I think you're right. There's a lot of loneliness, maybe friends, love, hardship, uh, complications. You know, I think right now, in the, if you look at the United States, I think we all agree, it's a, it, it's, it's a tough, it's tough to be here right now. What, regardless of what your political leanings are, it's tough in, in terms of tension. And, you know, I made a joke about the debate last night, but I think it's, um, we're in a very interesting place. So I don't know how we would describe these type of things, but, you know, I think places, as, as you're saying, you want, I think places, people change you know, through, through time. So we'll, we, we'll have to see what happens, but, um, but I think uh, that's something I've always loved about poetry. They seem, seem to capture all these these images and these things. I think that's 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 wonderful. I think. And, and Spanish language is is so beautiful. You know, the language oh, yeah. itself is so that's beautiful, actually, and, and very hard. Uh, yes. Many people say many people say that the, that the, the most difficult language around the world uh, are the Chinese. Mm -hmm. and Spanish. Japanese, the kanjis, etc. and Spanish. Really? So but, it's quite interesting. <laughs> I, I would say that is interesting because I tried to learn Arabic and I had I could not do it. That is a hard language to learn. I, I respect anyone who learns Arabic. Oh but yeah. I think that Spanish would be right up there in terms of difficulty. That's, that's because amazing. because the Spanish language has several times. Uh, yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, the tenses. Uh, yeah. To speak, you need to use several uh, uh, times speaking, times yep. uh, present, future, and many, many others. So it's, it's pretty difficult to learn, you know? Yeah, but I, I, would, I would say like, yeah, that may be true. We have the subjunctive tense, but at least with Spanish, you, you know, the word is pronounced the way it appears. Whereas in English, it's a completely different story. Uh, yeah. Know. You know, yeah, a couple, you know, believe it or not, I, I'm a native English speaker, but the other day I, I had trouble pronouncing this word in, in the, indefatigable. I think, indef see, I, I can, can one of you tell me how to say that word? I know it sounds, because it, one, it's a word I have not used. I know what it means, but it's not one that I, I uh, use every day. So now I'm just using, oh, I'm tired instead of using indef indefatigable. But see, I mean, this is really, yeah. It's interesting, you know, um, oh, right. but with Spanish, at least you, it can at least flow and you can pronounce the, uh, the word. I, that's why I've always liked about Spanish. Um, and of course we have to, we have to come in with some more aforismos cubanos here. So how about, <laughs> uh, let's see uh, who knows, que bola? who knows that other than Juan? I know he knows that obviously. <laughs> Tierra, take a guess. Jen? It's like a, it's like a, what's up, man. Yeah. It's uh, already right, right here. Uh, <laughs> Kind of. <laughs> okay, because my first thought when I heard that was like, que boludo. And then I thought, mm, I don't think it's probably the same as in Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, que boludo is, what's up? I think what's it's... Um, it's very typical. So, from, yeah. Uh, but another one that my students, and I love this because the Cuban students told them, uh, uh, taught them this one. This is, this is a great one. <laughs> it's going to... Um, Whoops. See how fast I can type here. What's the crake? <laughs> <laughs> Except it's pronounced crack. What's the crack? Crack. Oh, what's really? the crack? Oh, okay. I, I never would have guessed that. Que candela. It's another hard language. <laughs> so, so that means what's up, right, Sierra? Yeah, crack is essentially like the fun. And so uh, instead of saying like what's up, it's kind of like what's the fun. Oh, she's really, it's a. That I never would have known, and I never would have pronounced it. I would have uh, pronounced it wrong. Um, but that that's really good. Uh, que candela, that means... Uh, que candela. Yeah, que I candela. don't know in English. Oh, it's, it's like I'll, a... I'll, uh, I'll, what I'll, a fire. <laughs> like really, it, it, I'll, I'll, I'll tell, um, I'll do an example. I'll say, hey, uh, Wilford, how did you do in your Spanish exam today? Ah, oh, Tom, que candela. What do you think that means? What a disaster, right? Or I had one of my uh, Cuban friends, uh, 
Giannette went to a, a town, small town in Cuba because I sent her there to look, for, look at them, uh, something for me. And I said, so, uh, Giannette, what, what did you think of that town? The town is, este pueblo es un, cana, es un candela. It's, it's a candela, this town. It's a very small type of thing. So uh -huh. one of those words that has a lot of different meanings. Like the, another one uh, in, in uh, Bosa, there was a, I saw a few years ago in Havana, a wonderful, it was a five minute documentary, but it was about the word cosa. You know, Mi cosita, hola cosa, <coughs> que tal la cosa, como va la cosa. It's all the different ways that Cubans use the word cosa. And I'm trying to find out that, find a documentary because it was really, really fun. I thought it was. Uh, cosa, it's like, um, it, it's in general, is the, the, the reality yeah. we are living. Right. So la cosa, it's like a, a, how how are things? You right. Know? Yeah. It's yeah. it's kind of uh, yeah, it's, it's it's interesting. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like I said, it's in uh, in in Cuba. It's just amazing the expressions that they have. I I mean it's you know I've been trying to write write them down. Just one for me to learn, but also to teach students. Uh, it's 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 amazing. You know, it's an uh, island. It's an island. So uh, the island have many uh, <clears throat> many visitors. Uh, yes, right. Um, commercial things, uh, a, a big market um, between uh, the ships. Uh, I mean, from from the nineteenth century, uh, during during the the the, um, the eighteenth century. Uh, there were many, uh, there were many ships and um, uh, visitors from, from from the whole world. So they they uh, they gave us uh, sentences, ideas, new ideas. Um, so long time ago. So uh, that's why uh, we have all these. Uh, this kind of, of, of words, um, yeah. It's... There, there, there's another one I like too. Um, I forgot what it is. I think it's, oh, bueno. there's a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> is it comió el cable? I think. <laughs> so, yeah. so, all right, there you go. So I did get it right. So what, what, what does that mean? Let's... <laughs> uh, it means, um... It, it means that you are suffering, mm -hmm. especially uh, uh, you have suffering uh, an economical crisis. That means, okay. uh, that's what, what it means, that you are suffering about uh, econo uh, economical problems. Mm -hmm. You have economical problems, you don't have food, so, so uh, you eat the, the cable. <laughs> 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 see, that's, see, I, I, I can't, um, I can't think of an, Eng, an American English equivalent of that. You know, I really can't. You know, it's, uh, no. no. I think that's why I like about these expressions. Um, another one, and I, my students, and this will be the last one, but my students always loved it when, when we were, when I was teaching them. Uh, oops. Or is it just. So I think, uh, <laughs> so let's see, Sierra, can you guess what that means? Kathleen, what do you think? <laughs> I have no got, idea. It, it means you got crazy. Yeah. So you it were means drinking. you got crazy. Yeah. It's, it's like we would say in English, he or she is fried, right? Uh, that person is fried. So that, that person's trying to jump out of a plane without a parachute. He's nuts, he's fried. You get you get mad. You 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 are insane. Yeah, <laughs> you are insane. Yeah. So that's uh, so that that's you know I've always enjoyed it because I've always enjoyed learning these Cuban expressions. But it's a wonderful way for American students to get into the Cuban culture, and and yeah. and, um, and learn. You know I think you, and, and basically you make you make them think in Spanish because like like the other one comió uh, cable. I can't think of, a, of an equivalent in English. I don't know what the same concept would be. But you don't need, as long as you understand it, you don't need to be able to translate it into English. 
That's why you hire a translator or some, you know, let them do all the work because that's, that's hard to do. Um, and I'm sure, Sierra, do you have a, a word like that similar in, in Irish, in, in, in Ireland? Uh, I have to admit, I don't speak fluent Irish because oh, okay. it was the hardest language for me to try to learn. I yeah. think I quit the class within the first 48 hours. It, it's, it's not easy, you know. Um, you know, I, I, I learned something in, 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 in Ireland. Uh, uh, let's see, I think. That word, Owen. Owen. Yeah, but that's pronounced Owen. I never would have guessed that until someone told me. So it's... Uh, yeah. uh, it, 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 it is interesting uh, the way languages are. But anyway, let's see who else. Um, so Kathleen, any, any thoughts? What, what do you think? What's on your mind? Any questions? I can't think of many questions. Um, I would ask um, Yuan, um, so do you teach poetry? Mm -hmm. And if you do teach poetry, how is it, uh, how is it received by students? Um, in general, I, uh, I'm living in Mexico right now. I'm from Cuba, but uh, uh, I, I live in Mexico. Um, uh, in general, I teach philosophy. I'm a professor of philosophy at the university in, in, in Mexico. So I teach philosophy, but um, I gave... Uh, uh, some lectures about poetry and literature uh, in Mexico uh, by my own, no? not uh, uh, in the university, online. I teach poetry online. Um, the students, um, they receive very well the, the poetry, even the Cuban poetry, uh, but uh, they love, uh, they love um, at least uh, much more the, um, the politics, the politics thing, uh, not, not poetry. So uh, I began to, to speak uh, about poetry and the, 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 the lecture ends with uh, politics, always. It doesn't fail. It doesn't fail at all. One iota. It's, uh, I don't understand. Maybe because Mexico um, has living uh, right now uh, uh, a crisis, a political crisis um, ab about uh, murders. Uh, so we have uh, violence a big violence right now in Mexico. So I think that's why students uh, uh, prefer to talk about, uh, about politics in the middle of the class, in the middle of, of, of a poetry class. <laughs> so it, it's quite interesting. So what can I do? <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, they, 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 they like it, they like it uh, um, to, to write poetry, um, especially to know the, the Cuban poetry. About my is, country. is your poetry influenced by politics at all? Not really, actually. <laughs> Not really. I, I, I have uh, a few, a few poems about politics, but in general, uh, I prefer to talk about daily life, uh, talking about my 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 personal life, um, and about what I see in the reality. And if, if, if it has a, a, a relationship um, with politics, uh, I don't know. Uh, I prefer that the, the, the readers uh, realize if, uh, if, there are, if there is a connection between, uh, between that and politics. I don't know. I prefer that the, the, the readers um, have that opinion so but, but I don't like to to write uh, political poetry I don't like it <laughs> so no I, I don't blame you um, I'm gonna write a name here of another uh, a Cuban uh, uh, that I've had trouble reading 
and you probably oh, know him. yes I, li I, I like him very much yeah i've had trouble reading him he's very um, i guess the word dense it's very difficult for me it, it is hard uh, so. and for me too well it's oh, good i feel better that's a <laughs> And I'm from Cuba, yeah. and I speak Spanish, and um, uh, the Spanish of Alejo Carpentier uh, is so difficult to, to, to read. Yeah, I, I don't know, <laughs> so don't, don't feel, don't feel no, bad, uh, don't feel... Uh, I, I think for, for those of you who don't know Alejo Carpentier, uh, the work that he does is similar to James Joyce's Ulysses, that's how dense it is. So. Uh, that's why you can find you you I'll tell you I read three pages and I gave up because I, I couldn't I couldn't um, It was very hard for me. Uh, it, it, it's tough, but I just put out the name there So, you know, Alejo Carpentier, he he's a very big name in Cuban literature. So uh, Every it, time every time I read Carpentier every time I read it I, 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 I have a dictionary by yeah. my side <laughs> always <laughs> Because it's too difficult. It, it, to it really, it really is. It it's really baroque, is. I think baroque. Uh, yeah, a yeah, baroque style. It, baroque, it baroque style. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 it's tough, but like I said, it, it for me, uh, uh, from what I read, some some of the Cuban poems, um, it's always very lyrical, you know, very, very expressive, a lot of imagery. I, I, I really like it. I think it's a, uh, it, it's good. Um, I'll, I'll give Alejo Carpentier another time, uh, another chance, but I, I don't know, uh, another wait. Uh, <laughs> you need that I, I, <laughs> I have to improve my Spanish and probably English to, to get there. So, <laughs> so if nothing else, you all know another, another Cuban, Alejo Carpentier, very, very, very big name. Um, I just wouldn't know which book to recommend because I haven't um, read it. So. <laughs> the, 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 lost, the, lost, the Lost Steps. Yes, I've heard, yeah. it's a good one. In, in Spanish, would be los pasos perdidos. Okay, the lost steps. Okay, the lost steps. It's a, it's a it's a great book. It's a good one. The lost steps. I recommend that uh, that book. Oh, good. I, I love it. All right. I good. have another question. Um. Because you've studied and obviously you write poetry and you're an author and um, you teach philosophy, were you ever, um, did you think that your life was going to be this way that you would be able to follow your passions? Or were you ever pressured to do something more realistic? That's a difficult question. <laughs> Uh, and it's a good, it's a good one. <laughs> it's a good question. Uh, it was, it, it was hard in my life uh, because um, in general, in my life, um, uh, I have been uh, divided uh, in, in that way. Uh, um, I have been uh, divided uh, between the practical life that includes money, uh, success, etc., and the other side uh, that includes uh, inspiration, uh, imagination, all the dream world, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I have been uh, in, in in many travels because of that. Uh, I do my best. Uh, I try to, to, to earn money uh, doing practical things. For example, I, I, I teach right now, I'm teaching um, um, communication uh, um, and I'm teaching, um, I give lectures about uh, institutions and, and the relationship between institution and communication research uh, uh, is not it's not about philosophy it's about a uh, um, uh, practical topics i teach uh, economy in mexico uh, and that's the, the 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 i mean that's the the field uh, about about uh, practical 
and mm, uh, so uh, that that uh, job gives me money in in one hand, but in the other on the other hand, uh, I try to to uh, to write in my free time because that's what I feel and and this is the the that that is my passion my 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 interest it's it's it's, it's uh, that field especially that field well uh, you're right uh, it's pretty difficult to to swing uh, in two waters especially people uh, who like poetry and people uh, who has a that passion for uh, uh, passion about uh, literature or or about uh, poetry it, it's 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 hard it's a hard life <laughs> at least for me uh, but I, I i do the i do the best that i can <laughs> uh, i don't know if i if i answer it uh, your question sorry no, my i answered it perfectly uh, um, my apologize for my English. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. But I, I think you're, you're you're describing what is the it's the life of any writer or poet is they have to have another job. They cannot just write poetry. They have to work. Yeah, because you need to to, <laughs> to eat. You yeah. need to eat. <laughs> so uh, uh, normally. Uh, it, it's very common. Uh, you, do, you don't earn you don't earn money uh, doing poetry. Right. right. That's 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 unfortunate. You know, it's I think I think even here in the states, not many people. Um, yeah, you know, re really read poetry. I think it's it's an issue. Thank you very much, but uh, that's reality. <laughs> the hard life. So I try to 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 keep. Two fields, the, the two fields. I try to keep the, the that field uh, about uh, practical or about the, the, the business world, mm -hmm. and I try to 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 keep my passion uh, about literature and about reading in my free time. But that's the the thing. <laughs> Are you working on another book now on on new poems? <laughs> well, good. I have I, I have five five books. <laughs> wow, it's impressive. In that? manuscripts, in manuscripts. Very good. Uh, I have five manuscripts, three novels, and two um, uh, two poetry books. Very good. Five in total. Yeah. Uh, um, for me, it's a. Uh, um, I don't know. I don't know how to say it in English. It's an inspiration so, yeah. um, that keeping me alive. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I, I I I don't stop. Good. Every day, I try to. Uh, it came to me every day. I uh, came some some sentence, some some poetry. Uh, so I try to write it. Mm -hmm. Put it in the paper every day. So no, that, that, I, that I was gonna, you know, you answered my question. I was gonna ask, do you just sit down and and just think about something to write? No. Or, okay. No, no, no. I, 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 I'm gonna write it uh, with, without uh, without discipline. <laughs> I don't have discipline at all. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I I, I I know many people. I know many people uh, who are my friends. They write, they write a lot, mm -hmm. but but they have discipline. They, they say to me, no, I um I wake up. I wake up uh, in the morning at eight o'clock in the morning. So that's my 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 schedule to write. Huh? So at that time. I write and I finish around 7 p.m. Wow. Uh, to have dinner. Uh, I can't, I just can't. I, I, I don't have a, a discipline to, to write. Uh, 
uh, it, it depends on the muse. It depends on, on the muse. So, so right. I, I can take a shower mm -hmm. in the middle of the night and then <laughs> that time <laughs> I thought about uh, the muse just came up. I stopped my, my, my shower and my bath and I, 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 I take the paper and I write the, the, the poetry in that time That's because it. it just came up and I don't have a, a discipline. It could be at midnight or, or early in the morning. I don't know. <laughs> and, 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 and do you write the whole poem or just one or two lines when, when you get these moments of inspiration? It, it depends on the on the inspiration. Okay. It could be two verses, or two. It could be two li lines, or maybe whole poem. It depends on the the muse or the inspiration in that especially specific time. It depends on the on the time. Okay. Both. It could be both two lines or or maybe the whole poem. Okay, good. No, I, 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 I'm not a poet, so I don't know. I, I don't know how these moments, how, how it works. Um, it's quite interesting because it's something that came up, uh, that comes up, but if I, can, uh, if I can write it in that time, I feel horrible. I feel so, so bad in that time. If I if I couldn't uh, put it in the paper because I was cooking because I, I'm 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 talking to to someone, right. but it happens. Yeah, uh, of course, of course. It was the case that I'm talking to someone about I don't know about about market or about uh, children, mm -hmm. and then suddenly, in mysterious ways, a poem comes up. And I feel uh, so embarrassing because I don't want to talk about, I don't want to, to talk anymore with the person and I need the paper in that <laughs> moment. So I feel so terrible when I, uh, when I can't uh, write in that right time, the, the lines or the lines. No, it, it, it's interesting. <laughs> No, I think that that that's how artistic inspiration works. You know, I think uh, it's it's you know if you, it's like catching, as we say in English, catching lightning in a bottle. If you don't capture it right then, you you forget. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, exactly. I know that so feeling. You need to I put forget it. Too many things. You need to put it uh, in the paper right now because uh, yeah. then uh, you will uh, you will forget it. Oh. Of course. Yeah. I. I. I it's. The problem I have, I forget too many things. It's, it's, but it's terrible. It is. It's terrible. It is terrible. It, it's, it's, <laughs> For me, it's, uh... yeah. It, it, yeah. But um, so, I was. Do you think you'll be? I, I'm just curious. Um, and I, Kathleen or Jen, maybe I'm just going to direct this, or maybe even Sierra. Would, do you think it would be possible uh, for you on to maybe speak at your universities at some point? Some point, maybe or whether it's in the States or Ireland, I, th I think that'll be interesting. I'll just, I'll just put that out there. Um, but um, because you're still based in Mexico right now, right, Juan, I think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so. Well, I, so I guess the next question would be, um, when is your next book coming out? I don't know. <laughs> oh, well, that's okay, sorry. Right. Um, I, I have a, a, a little, Okay. Uh, um, uh, we wish um, uh, uh, because I I, I I mean I published uh, my first book, um, which is a novel in 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 Netherlands, uh, especially uh, exactly in in Leiden. It's a city. Leiden. Okay. In, in, in Netherlands, um, that that publishing house uh, told me um, that that I could uh, publish my next my next ones my my, my following uh, my next books 
in that publish, publishing house. Good. But I, I don't know. I prefer to, to send uh, my, my new ones in, in competitions. I, I, like to, uh, I like the competitions in, in, in several parts of, of the world. So I don't know. I, I don't know if my next book is uh, going to be um, in, my, in my publishing house or is going to be on a competition. Or, I don't know. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see. That's okay. <laughs> but, I hope, but I hope, I hope, uh, I hope uh, to publish uh, the next book very soon. Good. I hope so. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you will. That, that's good. So it's a. Uh, we look. We look forward to that. To to your next book. Uh, I do. Certainly. Thank you very much. Sure. Sure. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, does anyone else have any any questions? Sierra, Kathleen, Jen, Emily. I think. Uh, uh, she. My question, uh, Yuan, is what, uh, uh, like you had mentioned, living a life as a a poet poet is extremely difficult what motivates you and what keeps you going every day what inspires you to continue uh, um, there is no there is no reason actually uh, to keep going you you just you just have to do it there is no uh, there is no a uh, uh, a rational uh, motive, or it's just about it's it's all about feeling. It's all about uh, a need that we were talking uh, uh, before. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, it, it's not about control. I I can't control that. Uh, I was talking about about it. when I take a shower it just comes up and I can control it it's uh, and I think as as we were saying uh, with uh, Tom that's the 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 function uh, about art or about the creation yeah? about creation uh, I don't know it's uh, and you feel horrible if you don't put it in the paper so I don't know how to to answer that. You just keep going. You you can you can stop. You can stop. There is no an explanation uh, for that. At least I can. I don't know. I don't know if. Uh, no, that that if answered I mean. it. It makes sense in terms of like what what you say. I know it's the same expression in Spanish about. This is not my profession, it's my vocation type of concept. Yeah. Uh, I think that the, uh, it's, very, it's very hard in, in English. Um, it, it's very difficult. I don't believe in, in, in that uh, writers, uh, writers um, that, um, that learn to write. In, uh, in 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 universities or or college, uh, I think that uh, the, the the job of of writing it's it's something uh, um, it's something that uh, uh, born uh, burns uh, with you. No, I don't know what. No, no, it's not the the correct expression. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's something you're born with, right? I'm uh, born with it. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Tom. So um, it's, it, it's not something uh, that you learn uh, with a teacher or or seeing uh, videos on YouTube. <laughs> or, no, at all. So it's a passion. It's a, a real passion. So. At least that's what I think in my in my own experience. Uh, that's what I was. That's what I can say about it. So I don't know. Well, I I think that's a it's a great answer. 
think it's I mean it's, it's we, we see <laughs> a lot of my people English no nice. no your English your English is fine but I, I I see a lot of people on YouTube that's how they learn how to do things well that's I have to admit this now that how I've tried to learn how to dance salsa is through you YouTube videos and obviously I wasn't born with the, the ability to dance but um, I think you're right you know I think um, people uh, there is an argument I don't know if you've heard this but it was by a Swedish scientist who said it's called the 10,000 hour theory and he says that for if someone practices something for 10,000 hours they become an expert uh, uh, I don't believe that do, do you what do you think uh, about the 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 the, the before uh, about the, the former question um, I, I always say that uh, the, the best college or the best school related to writing is reading it's reading books a lot of books yeah uh, many students uh, many students tell me oh, oh teacher uh, what can I do to to to, to uh, in order, in order to be a, a good writer, what can I do? And I say, and I always say, no, you need to read books yep. and, and live in life. To have sex, <laughs> yeah, so to have sex, um, to have uh, reading a lot of books and live in life. Yep. And all, all that, all those experiences uh, teaches you to uh, to write, uh, so that, that's my my idea about it. That that's the best uh, the best college uh, about writing. <laughs> Several books, a lot of sex, <laughs> uh, meeting new people. Oh yeah, of course. And, and of course. live and living life uh, intense. You know. <laughs> so that's my opinion about it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I think that that's a good approach. I think that's that's. <laughs> I mean, if you it makes sense. If you want to be a good writer, you need to have read, and read books and read newspapers and and, and things like that. That was my school. Yeah. No, <laughs> to, I think to publish that, books. <laughs> that, that works. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so so let's see. Uh, any um. Any other questions or any other comments for, for you on? Uh, well, uh, if not, uh, you want any other final thoughts? Um, uh, do, uh, do you speak Spanish, uh, Sierra and Kathleen? Do you know anything about Spanish? No, I wanted to take <laughs> Spanish in high school and my father told me I had to take French. And I lived in a, in a city outside of New York City. Uh, I lived in New Jersey, across the river from uh, New York City. And I turned to my father and said, where do you see anybody in our neighborhood that speaks French? And so he said, I said, people, we live near people who speak Spanish. I said, I'd like to learn Spanish. So it would be so much more valuable for me to learn. And I would also be able to learn it by people who really, who are native speakers of Spanish. So I thought I had won him over, but I ended up taking French. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then when I went to college, I went into the sciences and um, eons ago in the dark ages, when you went to graduate school, you had to take proficiency tests in languages. And I knew that there was absolutely no way I could be in advanced French. I, I just memorized the dialogue. I could not converse at all. So then I switched gears and took German. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a good okay. history. Yeah. I, so I tell students, don't do that. Don't do, don't do. If you don't listen to anything I tell you in international programming and stuff, don't do what I did. <laughs> uh, it's a good, it's a, a good history, yeah. <laughs> um, Let's see, uh, Emily, I see Emily there. Uh, and anything to, to add? I mean, have you taken Spanish, uh, Emily, do you speak? 
Oops, I'll, I'll, I think she's on mute. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like we've had some technical difficulties, but anyway. Um, well, yeah, Jen, you, you speak Spanish. Yes, I speak Spanish. M my last name is Ramos because my grandfather is de Puerto Rico, but he, um, he did not teach my dad or siblings to speak Spanish. He moved to um, the Midwest when he was 18 and he is now 88. Wow. He regrets it, but he said when he came to the mainland, it was frowned upon if he spoke Spanish and he suffered a lot of discrimination, yeah. discrimination and he did not want his family to suffer that. He married a woman, my grandmother from uh, Indianapolis her grandparents uh, came to the U.S. from Germany. Um, but my husband is from Chile and I lived uh, in, in Chile and I have worked in Chile and in Argentina. Um, I have not been to Cuba, but it has been something that I've wanted to do since uh, college. So since I remember since 2003, I've been wanting to go to Cuba. So I hope that one day I will get there. Um, but I have studied um, in Mexico, in Mexico. Um, oh. It's a beautiful country as well. And I would love to, to go back. I haven't been back since 2004. Oh. Interesting. But it's, it, I found it interesting, one that you mentioned about the philosophy students, because I worked at a university, several universities in Chile. And one of the universities in Chile I worked at, the philosophy students... <laughs> Um, had the same uh, the same habit of uh, returning to talk about politics, um, and they they were very well known in Chile. It's very well known the protests, and I lived there during a lot of the um, student protests. Um, so we the universities would close, and the, um, the police would come on campus, and we would have the um, I'm trying to think of the words in English and not Chilean slang because. That's how everything is there. Is they speak very differently. Um, the water cannons and the tear gas. So that was like a common occurrence once a week for a few years. So we would close down the campus. But um, I'm curious to know where you teach and if it's a big city, if you're in DFA or if you're in a smaller area and where your students um, are from. Uh, I'm living in a small area. Uh, I, I live in, in Puebla. It's near DF, uh, around two hours uh, from, from DF in Puebla. It's a beautiful city, actually, Puebla. Uh, the food is great. Um, and there are, there are many universities in Puebla. There are many. So uh, um, th there is... Um, uh, there is violence in Puebla, but not uh, not that violence uh, that comes from uh, the DF or other other states in in Mexico. Puebla is 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 very quiet. It's it, it's a it's a nice place to live, um, and there are many universities. But uh, as you were saying. Um, the 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 topic of, of politics always comes up uh, <laughs> because of the the the, the environment because the the, the reality uh, we are living in Mexico so that's why the students um, have have always interested in that uh, kind of topics it happens all the time so I mean, if you are a teacher. So you have to, to deal with it in, in the classroom. You have to deal with, with it, uh, that, that topic. So, so that's, the, that's the problem. Yes, thank you for sharing. I have not been to Puebla. I've been to Cuernavaca. Cuernavaca. Ah, yeah. And I've heard, though, very good things about Puebla. In my previous institution, we had a direct exchange program in Puebla, but as you know, it's very hard. It's a very hard sell. Mexico is a very hard sell for U.S. American students because of the news. Um, 
but I have heard good things about Puebla. So I'm glad that you are in a, an area that you like. Yeah, we have good teachers. We have good teachers here. Um, but you know, uh, we have many problems too. On the other hand, we have many problems too, especially uh, uh, what are you talking about? Um, uh, I, I, I knew um, American students here and they, and they, they, they suffered uh, about uh, racism because um, many Mexicans call, uh, call them uh, gringos. Um, it, it's pretty difficult to them uh, in some areas, not all the areas, uh, but in some universities, um, that's a, a, a big problem, you know, uh, um, especially for, for uh, American students. It's, uh, it's so sad for me to see that kind of situations, but, you know, <laughs> Latin America is, is very complicated in some cases. But in, in general, it's a nice place to live and, and to learn. Uh, we have learned uh, languages, uh, not only Spanish, uh, but native language. You know, about Mixteco, okay. for example. It's a native language, which is quite interesting. Uh, so I have learned uh, many things, uh, many experiences, and I appreciate it. I appreciate it because um, it's very good for me uh, to, to for writing. You know, it's very good uh, for a writer um, to learn about Mexico. It's a big universe, Mexico itself. So it's great. <laughs> well, let's see, any, anyone else? Uh, Sierra, Kathleen? <laughs> All right, well, thank you uh, very much for joining us. Uh, Yuan, thank you so much, that was, that was wonderful. And like I said, I, I, I've enjoyed your book immensely and I look forward to your next one. Let, let us know when your next one is and uh, maybe we'll see you at one of these universities or colleges here. Uh, in, in the States. I think that, that would be a lot of fun. It's possible. Yeah. I wish I, wish I could. I hope so. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, that's something we'll put on our list. We'll, we'll have to try and do. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Tom. Uh, to you, um, um, to Sierra and Catherine and Jen. Uh, thank you very much to all of you uh, for inviting me um, to share all, all kind of experiences. So I'm so glad to be here with you, really. Great. Well, thank thank you so much, uh, Yuan, and uh, we'll we'll be in touch, and and we'll do we'll do this again sometime in, in the future. We keep in, we keep in touch. Definitely. And if uh, uh, I don't know if if they would like, would you like to stay in touch with Yuan? I don't know if uh, if maybe uh, do you have a Twitter? account you want or, or Facebook um, yeah I have Facebook okay or, or I don't know my WhatsApp <laughs> okay well I, I can send the, the Facebook information to to those who are interested just let me know and then I, I could send that to you that's how yeah. that, that's if you how. need uh, some help or Catherine Sierra Jen if you need some information or some help uh, about um, I don't know literature or anything uh, you can you can talk to me. You can write me. Uh, uh, I I could I could give you um, my number of of WhatsApp, so you can write me there if you need any help about anything. I don't know. In Thank the, you. In the chat. Great. Perfect. I'll I'll pass that information then. Uh, Perfect. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Yuan. I, I appreciate it, and. Um, We'll be in touch soon, okay? Thank you very much. It was wonderful. Thank, Thank you, everyone, you. for joining us. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Mucho gusto. Uh, mucho gusto. Mucho gusto. <laughs>